Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Donald Shepard, who is a speaker and author of the book, The Dividends of Decency. Donald, welcome to the program. Mike, thank you. I'm so delighted to be here. You're welcome. So give us a little bit of uh, your background and what led you to um, the field that you are in and then the focus of uh, the book that you wrote. Uh, Well, a... um a brief background, I come out of a small mining town in Canada, up in Ontario, and uh, uh, got into the business world through some uh, uh, through certain traits, and I eventually ended up in consulting companies, and I was transferred by a very large one from uh, Toronto to San Francisco in 1980, worked there some more. I started my own business in employee communication consulting in 1985, Shepherd Associates, and sold that to Omnicom in 2000. And... Uh, I've been doing other things since then, but that's a brief synopsis of who I am. But uh, how I came to write the book was the was the election of Trump, uh, Donald Trump, um, in November of 2016. I, I've got to I've got to do this. This is crazy as a business leader. This person is not a good role model, and so <laughs> I, uh, I I decided to uh, be part of the resistance and write a book on the fact that real leaders, successful leaders. Uh, exhibit traits that you might not see and don't see in Trump. That's what caused me to write the book. Yeah, and um, I think it's interesting that you you focused on leadership traits rather than yes. his his political views because I think that you can yes. uh, have right. a lot That's of right. you, you know I mean there's I wouldn't agree with things uh, you would agree with and you wouldn't agree of with course. things I would agree with but we can agree on the fact that this trait or this character quality is something that would be universal no matter what the party line is. That Mike is so astute. I'm actually a Republican. I have been ever since I became a citizen and um, uh, I have voted Republican every time. No, my, I'm not. My book is not political. Yeah. It simply champions uh, uh, values, integrity, honor, uh, morals in, in running businesses and being an effective leader. It's not political. It strictly talks about values-based leadership. Thank you for making that clear. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And you know, you, you mentioned integrity, and you yeah. talk about how integrity determines the difference between leaders and rulers. And I thought yeah. that was a quite an interesting combination of words, leaders and rulers. So speak a little bit about how integrity ties those together or divides them. <laughs> <laughs> Think of it, and you, you'll understand this completely, I know. Uh, when you're a leader, uh, you involve people. You're a collaborator. A ruler doesn't. gives direction and uh, has all his uh, uh, peons go do these things. Uh, a leader listens to people, really listens to their points of view and different points of view, makes the final decision, but a leader listens and a ruler doesn't. Uh, a, a leader respects all people. Uh, regardless of a whole range of issues, whether it be color of skin or religion or race or uh, whatever. Uh, a, a leader values people for who they are as individuals. A ruler doesn't. It's all pre- presentation and image. Big differences. And it boils down to the fact that a leader is someone who's respected and valued by employees and others in the community that interact with that leader and, and vice versa. Um, and, and a ruler doesn't. Uh, uh, it's, it's a pretty stark comparison and very obvious. Um, does that summarize it for you? Yeah, it sure does. You know, it makes me think from the, I, I'm in the field of marketing and, and yeah. uh, authority positioning, and, and it makes me think of how so many times you can push a marketing piece at someone, or you can pull them in or attract them in, or you can give and serve and educate, or you can be pushy, right? So, I mean, it's really the, the same similar battle. Oh, it is the identical battle, Mike, and you know it so well. Uh, uh, the whole process of, of uh, selling, to me, I'll, I'll just simplify it, please. I, I, I uh, taught sort of business development in the consulting world, too. The simple uh, key to selling is listening, getting to understand the uh, prospect uh, uh, that, uh, that your client that you might be dealing with, understand their perspectives and interests and needs, and um, only responding 
uh, to what they want to hear based on uh, their needs and so on. Uh, that's exactly what it is. Uh, uh, effective leadership uh, applies to so many issues of, in our society and in business. That's quite right. The, you, you knew that, and but thank you for letting me uh, uh, bring it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just guiding guiding the conversation. But but in reality, <laughs> uh, you know, it's interesting how you you know you tend to when you listen and and you know things, you hear something and it makes you think of something else. Yeah. And it's like you know, it's kind of like you know. So I think that's just really a. a, a a, a great way to think of things from both sides of a perspective. So let's think about how um, how people, and I work with entrepreneurs, I'm sure you work with yes. corporate leaders, but yes. wouldn't you agree that the, the principle remains the same when you want to lead, whether it's yourself or your small organization or a corporation, there's some specific things that you need to make sure you're focusing on. What are some of those things? And then let's kind of turn into what happens if you don't focus on them? Where does that kind of lead the lead the ship? <laughs> yep. Uh, it's interesting. And, and with the, just to give an example, uh, what you're talking about, think of uh, Bill Gates or uh, Michael Bloomberg, um, uh, people who've built great businesses over time. Uh, they uh, have the same characteristics and traits as somebody who's starting a business from ground zero, an entrepreneur building a business. And that is that they respect and value all people. It's really, really a key part of values-based leadership. And um, they, they engender um, uh, followers, believers, because they respect and value all people and treat them accordingly. Yeah. And um, uh, that's one. The second is, and I, I think, uh, well, all these points are critical. Hire based on character, competence, and potential. That, and, and you know this. It, it, that includes hiring people smarter than you in one or more ways and who represent multiple perspectives. Um, and be disciplined enough to uh, create and commit to daily routines that move you closer to achieving what your goal is. That's hiring based on potential and competence, not on any other factor. That's a diversity. So that means celebrating diversity and um, uh, understanding that uh, everyone brings something to the table and you want people that are smarter than you. And, and here's, here's the tie-in, as I describe it in the book. Uh, know who matters most of the success of your business. Y your goal and your focus isn't profits or making money or achieving the particular goal. Your focus needs to be on uh, value and respecting your employees, your clients, your vendors, others in the community. When you do that, you have people who return that favor, the success of a company. And I, I talk about all this through real life experience, and, and I know you understand this too. When you build a business, uh, you're building a team, you're building a, a group of people who want the same. They all understand that you need to make money to succeed. That's not even questionable. And, uh, but within that, they're all working toward the same goal because they feel respected and valued. And uh, knowing that, who really matters most to your business? It's not profits. Uh, they'll come. Profits are a result of the right traits and doing the right thing. Did I take too long to answer that? But no, that was perfect. And, and it made me think of something else because I would suspect that there's, when you say, you know, hire for character and, and those traits, <laughs> that there's a lot of people that go, oh, that sounds great. I'm going to do that. But... <laughs> But this person right here, they're perfect for the job because they have this experience and yeah, they're not really all they should be in this area, in this area. Isn't there a tendency to kind of gloss over some of those thinking, well, that's fine. But then maybe later on, they're like, oh, my goodness, I shouldn't have ignored that worry. <laughs> it's uh, I'll give you um, it, it's easy to gloss over and to think more of how someone presents themselves, how they appear than who they are and where somebody else might have greater potential. When I started my business, I didn't have uh, the money to just hire huge staffs and all the top people as, uh, in terms of experience. I hired people based on their potential and their ability to learn. And um, uh, it, it was so different, Mike. The big consulting firms I worked for would look for uh, this is just a, uh, an example, a Harvard MBA, uh, uh, good looking, uh, dresses well, presents well, uh, and, um, uh, and yeah, I've had some experience with a similar company. I couldn't do that. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to hire the person who had the potential to deliver to a client exceptional quality and service. 
and uh, so that means don't look at those other things. Look at the person and who they are, what they've accomplished, uh, what their potential is, uh, and hire that way. And uh, uh, it, it's, it became for me a matter of necessity and uh, uh, because I did value all people still do, um, uh, that was the end result. Yeah, it, it, it's easy to overlook and think you want a presentation. You want the cover of the book to look great uh, when, in fact, it's the content that makes the book. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that the tendency in our society is always – um, you know, like the cliche immediate gratification, you know, we've got the text message, instant message and microwave society and all of that. So I think if someone hears, you know, I need to hire for this, I, I think they're almost in the back of their mind thinking, well, when am I going to confirm that that was the best decision? Because they're really not, you know, performing in this area or that area, or how long do you feel that leaders should kind of, you know, uh, watch for that to be the best decision, or is that going to be an immediate um, impact because there's, this person's going to come in with that, you know, clarity and character and focus and integrity, and it's going to be a, an immediate impact in, in the organization? It will be an immediate impact, and this mm -hmm. goes back to this win-win-win model. What will determine whether you'll be keeping that person or not is the client or the customer. Mm -hmm. Because your focus is so, in any business, small business, big business, your sole focus is to deliver to the client or customer and, um, and treat them with respect and value. And, and you want people that will do that and deliver quality. So the sole determinant is, is this person doing that? Is this person engendering uh, a relationship with this client or customer? And if and you're watching, you better be watching that really closely. Mm -hmm. If you're a small business, you better watch that very closely. So uh, if that isn't the outcome, isn't what's happening, you need to make a change right away. Uh, uh, it, it, your company will be gone. If you're uh, uh, hanging around, well, maybe it'll all change. No, integrity uh, of, of values, uh, they don't change. Um, and um, if uh, uh, it's not there, you'll see it very quickly, but you'll see it with your important constituency, the client or customer. And I mean, I, again, I, I know you're guiding the conversation. You know this is very important for the entrepreneur, for the person building a business. And, and sometimes even more critical because typically an entrepreneur would be um, smaller or have more uh, yep. personal relationships with vendors and clients and strategic alliances yep. and you make a bad hire and you are really in bad trouble. Whereas a bigger company, you know, it's kind of like the pebble in the ocean, you know, it did make a splash, but yeah, we can, we can gloss over it and recover a little quicker. <laughs> I, oh, that is so true. I remember so well in the early days of building a business, uh, a small, uh, starting with just two people, uh, having no money, uh, anything, but having a reputation. And anyway, I'm, I wonder, uh, the client is so critical to acquire the client. Men take care of them uh, so well because you need that client to come back. You need that client for a referral. Huge yeah. companies, nah, they, they, uh, not that they don't want that, but they can. The pebble in the water uh, is is what the issue is. But you can't you can't afford to lose money. You can't afford to make mistakes. You can't afford not to deliver to the client. So yeah, th that's it. And so if you have somebody that you hire that's not delivering as you should, you need to change that immediately. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 so anyway, yeah, I, I beat well, that to death. Well, let's flip let's flip that whole thought process 180 degrees. And now you talk about why you should always be more valuable to your employer than yeah. they are to you. So what does that look like? <laughs> yes, it's a, my, it always was my mantra when I work for somebody else. It means that when you're in a job, whatever you're doing, to the best that you can, first try and be, do it better than anybody else around you. Uh, that's one. Another uh, element is work harder than anybody else around you. When I was a young man, I had a mentor, I'm talking 17 years old, who said to me, Donnie, when people look at you, they can't, they can't uh, tell how smart you are, but they can sure see how hard you work. Work harder than anybody else, and the smarts will get a chance to have an impact. And uh, so uh, being more valuable to your employer than they are to you, the, the second component is work harder uh, than anybody else around you. It's, the point is, um, 
you will have more options in life. If you're working for somebody else, corporation or individual or a small group, um, you need to be more valuable to them. It gives you more options, both within the organization and outside the organization. And, uh, you know, isn't it just yeah. a mindset shift? Meaning so many people, and I don't know statistics, somebody could throw actual numbers to this, but so many people in the workforce today are doing the quote unquote punch in the clock. You know, I'm putting in my time, I'm coming in today, I'm doing what's expected, but they're not um, being what, you know, entrepreneurial, but actually, do, are you familiar with the term intrapreneurial, you know, having that entrepreneurial mindset within an organization where it's like, you know what, if I was running this company or department, we ought to be thinking about this and cutting back here or expanding there. And, and even just that mindset makes the bosses and the higher ups going, that person's different. Not only do they turn the work in on time and it's good, but boy, they're, they're bringing a little bit more uh, thought to this, uh, process then their their other uh, co-workers and then when promotion time comes or expansion they're thought of uh first exactly it, it, it's exactly correct it's being exceptional and uh, uh it sets you apart uh from others and um having that mindset as like uh, of being an entrepreneur inside an organization very difficult because um, uh, being performance uh minded uh, you want to work for an organization that respects and values performance, not just uh, punching the clock and getting X amount of work done. Uh, otherwise, that entrepreneurial spirit that you just talked about will get you fired as opposed to get you promoted. But that's, yep. I, I yeah, you got to know your culture. <laughs> your point's valid. Yeah, yep, exactly. Yep. Exactly. Well, hey, Don, let's um, let's wrap up with how can people pick up a copy of your book? Where's the best place for them to go? And uh, and is it Amazon, your website? What's the best place? Well, the quickest and easiest is to go to Amazon. It's Dividends of Decency uh, by Donald Lee Shepard. And it's actually out now. I, I uh, saw that they're starting to deliver books already. Uh, you also can go to any bookstore. And they'll order the book for you and deliver. And that's a good, nice way to support a local business. Yes. Uh, and and uh, so that's that's how either through your local bookstore or directly at Amazon, just type in dividends of decency and you'll see it jump up. Excellent. Well, Don, thank you so much for your time. It was great to get to know you and talking about your book today. Mike, thank you. Congratulations on all the good work you do. Thank you. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.